uh, you can see 212 is more than we have in available funds. And then when you add on those other things, it's a real problem. So we've got a math problem here. Um, we are currently in a conference committee where that means there are three representatives from the House, three from the Senate, and they're discussing this. Um, the House is sticking for, we're saying it's 1.25 plus the, the 50 million. And if you want to spend 212 million, then you need to show us how you're going to balance the budget. Because the only way to do that is to make massive cuts to Medicaid, which we're not willing to do. Which, because Medicaid is what is used to pay for uh, poor people who are in nursing homes, it's used to pay for. Um, people with mental health issues, lots of programs that are, that are really, really important. So right now we're kind of at an impasse. So we're going to have to figure that out. If nothing happens, then it automatically goes to a 0% <coughs> increase, which nobody wants to do that. There's another big problem associated with this, and that is, I won't use the board for this. Um, this is the revenue side. On the revenue side, if our, our proposal is passed. We will have increased spending for K-12 education by 573 million bucks over the last five years, which is a lot of money. Um, the other side of the equation is the cost side. And you guys don't have this issue, but in the public schools, um, the, um, the teachers are unionized. And the way they decide what the um, uh, what their pay will be or how much will go up is through collective bargaining. So uh, the union collectively bargains with the school districts and they try to reach a settlement. If they can't reach a settlement, then they go to arbitration. And our arbitration system is currently broken because in arbitration under the current law, um, you know, if Ethan represents the teachers and he says, I want 4%, and Sam represents uh, the uh, school district, and he says, no, we can only give you 1.25. Um, the arbiter is not allowed to get any independent facts about the situation between you guys. He only gets the facts you give me and you give me. And then he has to pick one or the other. He can't go, well, your argument's stronger so I think it's more towards you, but not all the way. So we're going to give you 2% or 3%. You can't do that under current law, which is crazy. And as a result, the cost for schools goes up about 35 to 4% every year. So while the state is in a funding squeeze, the school districts are too. So when the Cedar Rapids superintendent says, if we don't get 4%, really it's about 3.5%, we're going to have to lay off teachers. That's true. But the reason that's true is because the unions have bargained for a raise that is not supportable by the revenue that we're given them. And the superintendents can't control their costs, 80 to 85% of which are teachers' salaries. It's a long answer, it's a complicated issue, but we passed a bill in the Iowa House which would try to solve that arbitration problem and allow the arbiter to, to actually mediate between the two and pick something that makes sense. Yeah? Uh, so, sorry, did you say that $200 million was for education, set aside for education? The, yes. Uh, the 200 million? No, this is total, total available right. new revenue. So that's what I was going to say. Thank you. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Um, could you talk a little bit more about uh, Sweden and uh, democratic socialism? Yeah. What's your name? Joseph. Joseph. Good question. Okay, so um, Sweden is a, some people call it a socialist country. It's technically not a socialist country per se. It's a social democracy, which means that um, government is involved in just about every aspect of people's lives. And um, people have cradle to grave benefits. Uh, so they will tell you healthcare is free. They will tell you that um, education is free all the way through university. And when people hear that, they think, wow, that is awesome. How can they do that? I would love to move there and have free education, free healthcare, all this free stuff. But 
they don't tell you is that in order to afford that, they have an enormous tax burden. So the average Swede is paying about 75% of their income to the state in taxes. Um, and that creates all kinds of problems because if three quarters of the year you're working for the state, suddenly your incentive to work harder isn't really there. And so they don't have the same dynamism, entrepreneurial spirit as we have here in the United States. Um, they don't have a lot of startup businesses like we have here in the States. And the opportunities to excel aren't really there. If anybody makes any money in Sweden, they leave Sweden. They go someplace else because the Swedes take so many of so much of their money that they're like, why, why would I work in Sweden and then lose 75% of my, my income? And the benefits, depending on where you are, may not be justified by the, the expense. Um, I'll give you an example. So I went to the University of Stockholm for two years. So free education. Um, and I could not figure out for the life of me why, when we were coming up to our first big test, why nobody was stressed, nobody was studying, nobody even seemed concerned. But you know, my grades counted, they were gonna go on my training report, they mattered, and I'm kind of representing our country, so I wanted to do a good job. So I studied hard, took the test, and then when I got my grade back, that's when I realized what was different, because um, I received a Val Bouchan, which is a very good, along with 50% of the class. And the other 50% of the class received a good. And the only people that didn't get a good were the people that didn't come to class at all, and instead of getting an F, they got an incomplete, because we don't fail people in Sweden. And so I immediately understood why people didn't work very hard, because there was very little incentive to work hard. And it, it impacted me. I mean, how hard do you think I, I worked for that next test? Like, shoot, I just got to be in the top 50%. I can get the highest grade. Um, and that attitude permeates the whole society. And so Sweden's a very small country, only 9 million people. But that system will not work in America. And uh, so, yeah, those are my, my thoughts on that. Go ahead. So keeping in mind the problem with free education in Sweden, but however increasing education rates, is there some way that we can bring uh, college rates down so that students you know, aren't trapped under these mounds of mounting college, of student loan debt yeah. and able to become independent after college? Yeah. Um, I think uh, the governor and the legislature have done a good job of freezing tuition in Iowa for the last couple of years. Um, I am of the belief that if you want to get a college education, uh, you can get it. My son went to um, Kirkwood. Kirkwood is unbelievably cheap. You know, you can easily work and go through Kirkwood. You can get two years at Kirkwood, and then you can transfer to one of the other universities. Um, our universities are some of the least expensive in the country, and I think we got to try to keep keep that price down so that there's access for everyone. But if you get to the point where it's free, so here's another one. Um, Mr. Cabot, phone call on part one, Craig Cabot.